Yeah. Want to talk about Cold War Dr. Martins? They're already out anyway. I'm sure some of you have probably seen them, but just as an image, <clears throat> I thought they looked really cool. So a Cold War, a Cold War the brand founded by um, the one Samuel Samuel Ross has um, managed to collaborate with Dr. Martins, which is a pretty um, unexpected collaboration. But once you see the shoe, it does make a lot of sense considering uh, Cold War's aesthetic, which is really cool. And I do think it's a, a signifier of an evolution of the brand, right? Um, a Cold War came into the market or came into the scene um, with his first couple of runway shows, Sammy Ross essentially what buying pairs of white Air Force Ones and sort of you know customizing them himself, over dyeing them, taking off the laces, adding some labels on them, and just you know kind of um, what are they calling it? What does it say in America? Freaking them up a bit, right? And um, that was the aesthetic that it was kind of you know you kind of uh, associated with a Cold War, right? And then you'd get op eds or you get reviews of the brand stating that it was a you know post streetwear brand, and you know you'd get some pushback from Samuel Ross who wouldn't really want to be you know pigeonholed as just a streetwear brand, and I guess he stopped saying that sort of stuff and instead just proved it on the runway. And then season in, season out, you got to see a kind of an increase and a refinement in the vision. Um, he started to really level up. And now you've seen, especially with the um, introduction of their own inline footwear that they have now at the moment, that is completely, you know, um, it's completely sort of against any classic sort of streetwear model or shoe or, yeah, that you'd kind of ex expect from a streetwear brand. And now you see this Dr. Martin and you think, okay, cool, they've definitely made a transition. You know, they've definitely kind of just naturally done it over a period of time. And I guess the Dr. Martin shoes is a good signifier for that. Again, in my opinion, this is from um, ID Magazine. So the Cold War reimagined the Dr. Martin's classic 1460 boot. And, you know, you're more than probably familiar with a 1460 boot that they've sort of reworked with the addition of a zip. And it looks like the laces are enclosed maybe underneath or they don't have the laces on top. But regardless, a really clean silhouette with um the stitching on the midsole tonal as well in black you've got the black sole the sort of translucent black soles which is a bit different from the sole you get on a regular um dr martin's a sort of clear or yellowy tint they've gone for a completely monochrome boot and it looks beautiful um it's a short article from id it says since uh first launch six years ago dr martin's and 460 have earned a reputation as one of the blah blah okay so let's move on it says uh it's this proximity to fashion culture that's led to the initiation of dr martin's 460 red master collaboration series which is a great idea something i think they should have done previously but i'm not sure if they've got because they've always have some very interesting creative directors that like dr martin's people that you would have kind of known of or heard of working in other places but they seem to keep it close to their chest but Dr. Myers is such a is such one is one of those kind of brands that has the ability to, you know, they're probably at an advantage because there's a lot of brands they could collaborate with in the industry from menswear to fashion to streetwear that they could sort of like do deals with or even some skateboard brands that would work well with them. Um, they kind of occupy that real sweet spot in lifestyle that can kind of you know work well with different brands regardless of their um, area of expertise. So it'd be interesting to see how much more they do of these uh, remastered um, collaboration series. It's continued, says, um, through which singular menswear designers have been invited to reinterpret the classic boot. As the seventh uh, collaborates in a series, the Northamptonshire-based footwear brand has enlisted Samuel Ross of a Cold War. He follows in the footsteps of designers like Yoji Yamamoto, undercover John Takashi. Okay, cool. Yeah, we saw the Takashi ones before, it's actually. It continues, it says, an ideal pairing given Samuel's renown for through... Uh, for a thorough investigation into British culture, it's like guys, he says, uh, the 1460 is placed right in the middle of 21st century cultural crosshairs. He says, and it's exactly um, this hybridity he's chosen to exploit. For his take on it, Samuel has respected its traditional status as a staple of the working class uniform, subtly transforming it by way of its trademark modern architectural approach to design and nods to high end tailoring. Crafted with pointed angular features, no eyelets, and an added zip side zip, it's one of those most unorthodox collaborations to date, reads the release. This collaboration explores new construction and pattern techniques, says Darren McKay, Dr. Martin's global footwear director. Okay, that's the guy that's in charge, then that's the charge of the collaboration. So, well done, Mr. Mr. McCoy, um, global director, says so here Samuel Ross is a master of the art of refinement. Here he's refined a 1460 through his creative lens, and I guess it's pretty tasty. Um, I'm interested to see how it's going to fit without the um, eyelets 
Oh, about the laces. I'm also interested to see whether or not once you unzip it in the middle, if there is like a latches or elastic on the side to keep your foot in. If there's one thing that I would say from wearing, I know, I've worn Dr. Martin boots for a really long period of my life. I worked in the stores there for a very, very long time too, when I had just left university. Um, one thing I know about the boot is that, you know, they're, they are pretty, you know, depending on your foot, depending on how you wear boots, they can be an absolute bitch to break in. So if there's one shoe that you could get away with not having laces with, it's a 1460. Like you don't really need a lace to wear with them, to be honest, especially when you get them new. Um, and with the addition of the zip as well, you can obviously kind of firm them up a little bit. You don't need to zip them up to the top, I'd imagine. I'd imagine my fat foot probably would have fit all the way to the top. But they've also got a zip on the side you mentioned here, right? They said, yeah, a zip on the side, no eyelets, and an added side zip. Yeah, so there's a zip at the front here, and I'm assuming one towards the side that you can also use. But yeah, so far, I'm a big fan of them. They're meant to come out when? July 25th, so they would have been out already. Um, if you have been able to get a pair, then let me know if you've got them in the comments, how they fit, what do you like about them. But I do think it's a good um, representation or evolution of what Cold War have been doing these past few years, man. They've been smashing it. They really have. Um, it's definitely a big, big, big level up. And it kind of reminds me of these um dr martin boots that they did previously with um vetimar I'm not sure if this was part of the collaboration the two they did previously do you remember the ones that had like um that had no security or something i think i got them i got them here on the screen they were laceless as well was that what was that was that 1490 it's a 10 hole right what is that one is that 1420 i should know the numbers but so essentially it's a sort of the same approach that uh sam rosa did but he's a cold war collaboration but in this i'm not sure if they've Sammy does, I'm not sure if they've kind of fused those, the tongue and the eyelids together, whether or not they've been heat pressed, I'm not too sure, but there's a side zip there, 10 hole Dr. Martin, again, both gone for the chrono, chrono, um, monochromatic look on the outsole and the upper, you know, black stitching on the black midsole, but they've obviously gone for the weathered boot on the upper to make them look like they've been used. And then if you scan through the other pictures, yeah, that's it, you got borderline written down the back of the boots. They were bloody incredible when they popped. I think this was 2017, I'm going to say, for Winter, Vetima, where they had all those collaborations. But one of my favourites, I'm not sure if these are part of it, but it's a long collaboration. If this was from 2017, they're still doing the same series. Maybe it's an ongoing thing they just keep doing with different brands. And then I remember them in a runway. Quickly show you here. That was the runway look. Da, 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 from Yeah, that was here yeah, for Vetima for 2017. So, oh no, spring 2017, my bad. One of one of the one of the better collections from Vetema from that era as well. Classic, classic Vetema shapes here. Um, that hoodie was incredibly popular for a while. Do you remember that Antwerp hoodie that they sort of re redid? And those are the shoes there. If you can see them now, I'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah, those are the boots there, worn by the model, tucked in a little bit. Like such a, such a good collection, man. Super underrated. This is that era where that's that period when I, when I essentially fell in love with Vetema. Loved everything about it. The slouchy, boxy fits. Um, the what you call it, the absolute madness he does with the proportions, like just incredible, all of it. But loads of them are collaborations. I'm pretty sure that one was the what was that collaboration? Canada Goose, I'm sure. Um, there's a few of them there floating around in that collab, yeah. But definitely one for the history books. A lot of stuff in here has definitely been put in people's grey or archives. I'm pretty sure, but yeah. Let's see what Sammy Ross does with his ones. And again, if you've got them, definitely let me know. I want to see or hear about how you acquired them. Did you pay for them? Did you pre-order via the Cold War website or did you get them somewhere else? Let me know.